Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central. We're coming to you with another Lightboard lesson video. And today we're going to go over another one of the OWASP top 10 security risks out there. And the new version just came out uh, recently and back in 2017. Um, today we're going to talk about the number five uh, vulnerability out there, the number five security risk, and it's called broken access control. Uh, which very quickly, this is not to be confused with authentication. Some people confuse authentication and access. Authentication is uh, verifying your identity, like, hey, if I'm going to access something, someone needs to make sure, hey, are you John or not? That's authentication. Access control is, is about giving me access to the different resources that I need to gain access to, or frankly, keeping me away from the resources that I don't need to be touching. So, uh, so when we talk about access control, it is, it is uh, taking um, the access that you need to uh, give some users, uh, allowing them to access functions and features, and then keeping everyone else out. So, all right, so with that said, let's say you have your, uh, your world-class web application here, and it is comprised of a whole lot of different stuff, but built into this thing, you have different functions and different uh, features and, and uh, those kinds of things. So let's say, for example, you have like some admin functions. So here's an admin little chunk right here. Uh, let's say you have, I'm going to just call it like, uh, you know, normal, normal user uh, functions that you would want anyone to have. This is kind of like that public facing stuff. Uh, let's say you have some auditing features. Uh, with like logs and you know all kinds of different stuff. All right, so you maybe you have different parts and pieces or different features of your web application uh, that you want to give certain people access to or not. Well, so out here, people that are going to be accessing this web application, there's a lot of different types of users. So you have, I'll just put, uh, I'll put normal user out here. Uh, this is your everyday, you know, let's say your web application, you're, I don't know, you're selling something. That's that's what you do. That's what your web application does. And you want all kinds of people in the public to come out here and access your web application and buy all your stuff, you know. So you have all these typical normal users and you want them to do these normal user uh, features and functions, of course. Uh, but let's say you also have some admins. Uh, let's say you have like some super users. Super users. Uh, let's say you have uh, maybe like an audit uh, group or an audit, you know, type of a user that wants to you know, do some log analysis or whatever. So, you know, you got all these different, uh, different types of, of users out there. Well, for the admin functions, you may only want the admin guys to access that. The normal users only need to have access to this part of your web application. Um, and actually the admin can do the normal user functionality and they can do, they can't, can, maybe they can access the audit stuff. Maybe the audit guys can only access the audit stuff. You get the point here. So there's different types of users that can access the different parts and pieces and features of your web application. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the things to check uh, for this broken access control, the problem that we're talking about today, uh, and again, the broken access control is where, let's say, for example, a normal user or what would appear to be a normal user gains access to admin functions on your web application, or they gain access to some audit log files or that kind of stuff, places that they don't need to be. So the access controls that you have put in place uh, would then be broken, of course. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the things that's interesting about this is some people say, well, use these, uh, use these different tools like DAST. Uh, the DAST tool is the Dynamic Application Security Testing Tool, um, or uh, SAST is another one. And SAS is the Static Application Security Testing Tool. Uh, some people call that the Source Code Analysis Tool. Uh, but anyway, DAS and SAST. One of the issues with DAS and SAST is that they, can, they do a good job of identifying whether an access control is in place or not, whether it's present or absent, um, and they'll let you know that. But if it's present, let's say, they, they don't do a great job necessarily of telling you how functional it is or how effective it is. So, uh, so one of the things that you really need to do with broken access control is to do a lot of manual testing and a lot of uh, manual checks to make sure that you've got this thing under control. I'm going to give a quick example of this web application of someone that may come in there and be able to access a spot or a thing that they don't need to gain access to. So here's an example. A bad hacker guy comes in. 
uh, to your, you know, web, webapp.com, all right? And that's, let's say that that's the URL for your web application. And you want all your normal users to be able to access that and buy a bunch of stuff and, uh, and do great things. But let's say the bad guy comes in and he puts this uh, slash um, and he changes the URL and he puts admin info, all right? So let's say that admin info is a place on your web application that a normal user does not need to get to. Well, if a normal user can access that URL right there, then that's a problem. That means you've probably had some broken access controls. Uh, another example, let's, uh, let's just do this again, webapp.com. And let's say someone tries to uh, change some uh, query parameters. Uh, so let's say they want some, they're trying to get to somebody's account information. So let's say account info, all right, so they're gonna try to get there, um, and then they're gonna do a little parameter, and then they'll say account equals, and I'll just put like one, two, three, four. All right, so if I'm a user, and I do not own account one, two, three, four, and I type that in and I can get to that, then that's a problem. That means you got some broken access control. So um, those are a couple of different things that uh, maybe some checks or some ways that that, uh, that this broken access control would manifest itself. All right, so what are some ways to, to get around this or to help with this? Um, a few are that you need to enforce all of this in uh, what I'll call trusted server-side code. All right, so do, do all of these uh, checks or the access control features uh, in trusted server-side code, first of all. Uh, I talked about DAS and SAS tools where those those are effective tools to use, but don't count on those exclusively for broken access control, uh, uh, you know, checks or, or functionality. Um, uh, another thing that you can do is deny by default. So other than this like normal user stuff that you want the entire public to see, then deny everything else by default and then only give it out to who needs, who needs to use it. Um, Implement these access controls one time and then reuse them. So rather than building access control features and functionality around, say, this part of your web application and others around this and others around this, build them one time, make sure that they make sense and they're secure and, and they're, uh, they're powerful, and then reuse those across the web application. Uh, so that's, uh, that's another good uh, way to, uh, to, to uh, you know, <laughs> secure yourself against broken access control. Um, Another one is uh, log your, uh, your failures and alert your admins whenever that happens. So you can shoot off you know, emails or you know, different notification warnings to your admins whenever uh, failures are uh, logged. Um, you can also rate limit access to some of these uh, different features. So let's say an admin is trying to get in and let's say, uh, let, or let's say a bad guy is trying to get into a spot that they're not trying to get into and it's an automated kind of a tool uh, well, if you rate limit the access to that, then you'll minimize your, your exposure and your, uh, your problem areas. Um, and then the last thing that I would say is this concept of least privilege. Least privilege is, uh, is the idea that you're only going to give someone um, access to the minimum extent that they need it to do their job or to do that function. And beyond that, you're only going to give them that access for the minimum amount of time that they need to do the job. So that really limits the exposure and the problems and all that. So, you know, again, if an admin only needs to do this one thing, or maybe a super user, whatever it is, only needs to do this one thing, then only give them minimal access to that one thing for the minimum amount of time uh, necessary. Um, so again, broken access control, the number five security risk out there on the internet today based on the OWASP top 10 list. Uh, this is kind of what it is. There, there are also some other things like um, uh, web application firewalls that can help with some of this. I won't say it's the end all be all, but there are some, there are some things that those can help with uh, as well with regards to, uh, to broken access control. So thanks for uh, hanging in there today with us, learning about broken access, broken access control. Uh, stay safe out there on the internet. If you enjoyed this video, uh, make sure you subscribe to our Dev Central YouTube channel, and we will see you guys out there in the community.